Australia, meanwhile, was debating its own independence, with a referendum to decide if the country wanted to become a republic. I think we'll be a very sad country if we vote no, because I think many of us, perhaps most of us, will feel that somehow or other we've failed. The Queen doesn't like republicanism, understandably, but she never, ever comes out with her opposition to it. And in public, at least, she was content for the Australians to do exactly what they wanted to do. The fact that so many tours were arranged for herself and for uh, other royals to go to Australia, the fact, for example, that Prince Charles was sent out to go to Geelong and to sort of bond, as it were, with the Australian people, and the many other connections indicated, obviously, that she and her family wanted to keep the Australian connection as much as possible. In a general sense, the Queen will again accept any decision that is taken by something like the Australian referendum. What she does mind about very much is whether a country leaves the Commonwealth. Just over 54% chose to retain the Queen as head of state. This debate is not over, and we look forward to uh, another referendum in due course. The result showed how divided Australians were on the issue. And I think she's a wonderful Queen of Australia. And we're very lucky to have her. Of course, the problem is when you do away with the monarchy, to whom do you hand all that celebrity and dignity? Do you just hand it on to the prime minister of the day, or do you create a pseudo celebrity monarchy of you know, retired TV presenters or pop singers or whoever? Hey, 